We're going to take a tour of My Fishing Advisor, an app for your phone designed to help you catch more and bigger fish. It's available for Android and iOS devices. This demo uses the Android version. We're currently working on an update for the iOS version that will get it caught up with the Android version. Now why would you want this app? There are other apps out there that tell you the best times to fish according to the Salooner tables, and there's a lot of evidence that Salooner tables really do help predict fish activity. But there are many other factors that are even more important. You also need to consider how the species you're after relates to water temperature, the time of year, the habitat, the light level, weather patterns, and more. No one factor alone is enough to accurately predict when and where the fish will be biting. My Fishing Advisor considers all those factors and more, and it's helped a lot of people catch a lot more fish. If you're a beginner, it can help you become successful much faster. If you're an experienced angler, it can help you identify some patterns and opportunities you might otherwise overlook. Now let's take a tour of the app. First you'll see this disclaimer. Basically it says that the app will give you fishing advice, but it's still your responsibility to make sure you comply with fishing regulations, that you respect people's property rights, and that you keep yourself safe. No surprises here. Now here's the main menu. Uh, we're running the pro version here, otherwise we might see some advertisements, and there's some features that are only in the pro version. Now, right away you'll notice that this app isn't flashy. It's not filled with animations or glitzy gimmicks. The user interface is simple, with big buttons and high contrast text, and that's no accident. The app is designed to be easy to use quickly, even if you're out in bright sunlight, maybe even using the app with one hand while you drive a boat or hold a fishing rod in the other. What's important to us is how useful the app is, not how pretty it is. The app has earned a lot of great reviews, not for its style, but for helping people catch fish. Let's check out the fishing forecast. Now since this is the first time the app has been run on this device, it's going to need to ask where we want to fish. Usually you want to get fishing advice for the location where you're at, so you can use GPS. If your phone doesn't have GPS, or if you want to try out a different location, you can pick a location on the map, but we'll do use GPS. That'll take our location, which is in La Crosse, Wisconsin. It's going to ask us now what type of body of water we're going to be fishing. We're going to be using the Upper Mississippi, that's a large river. Now we need to tell it what we know about the water conditions. Right now the river here is high, but the water level is falling, and the water clarity is a little over two feet, and the overall color of the water is brownish. And here's our forecast for the next 12 hours. We see the times for the sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset, and the moon phase, the major and minor salooner periods, which are times when fish activity often peaks, particularly if other conditions are also favorable. For each hour, we see the fish activity level, the forecasted temperature, cloud cover, chance of precipitation, and any rises or sets of the sun or moon. A lot of people use the forecast to decide if and when to fish on a particular day. We can change our target species with this button. Now since we've picked a large river in Wisconsin, we'll see a list of species that are common in large rivers in Wisconsin. If we want to fish for some species that isn't on the list, but we know they're here, we can uncheck this box to see all the species that the app supports. We add new species and other features periodically, so be sure to keep the app up to date on your phone. So if we scroll through here, we'll see there's a lot of different species we could pick from. But we're going to pick um, walleyes and take a look at how, uh, how they're different on the forecast. Now you'll notice that the walleye's activity level is quite a bit different from that of the bass at this time. Let's check out the 30-day forecast. This is a feature only available in the pro version of the app. This gives us a quick way to scroll through the next 30 days, seeing the peak activity level of the fish along with the moon phase, sun and moon rises and sets, salooner periods, and if the fish are pre-spawn, spawning, or post-spawn, we'll see that listed here. The top bar on each day is color-coded, ranging from bright green for the best days, yellow for fair days, and red for the least promising days. If we scroll through here, we'll see these post-spawn walleyes gradually getting better. There they look much better a few days out. Let's jump back to the main menu. 
Pressing the phone's back button will step us back one menu at a time on Android, and there's a back button on the screen to use on the iOS version. So we've backed out to the main menu here, and right away you'll notice this is new. The first time we ran the app on this new installation, we hadn't picked a fishing location, so it couldn't show us this feature then. From now on it can. Uh, these are the current conditions for the location we picked the last time we've used it. Across Wisconsin we have 68 degrees, 97 percent cloud cover, and 10 mile per hour wind from the south. So this image shows uh, moderately uh, choppy water due to the significant wind and pretty heavy cloud cover. So that's a pretty good representation for what it would be like out on the water right now. And that's a handy little feature. Now let's take a look at the quick fishing plan. Considering the time of day, the weather, the water conditions, and more, it will pick a structure, cover, and depth where our target species are likely to be. Then considering the habitat and activity level of the fish, it will suggest a lure or bait and provide details about technique, rigging, and other factors to maximize our chances of success. Just like on the forecast screen, we can change species or location with the buttons down here. So in this case, our structure, we have dam tail race areas or closing dams. It might list several that are comparable. It's picked a depth range of about 21 to 25 feet with moderate current. 23 is a number to look for in particular. Uh, cover, it said basically areas without cover or bridges and large rocks. Bait or lure, a 5 to 6 inch jig, white, orange, yellow, chartreuse. Uh, suggesting to work the bait extremely slowly, a uh, jig with a weight of about 3 8 ounce with an ultralight spinning rod and about 4 pound test. The walleye are not very active, but your prospects are good. You'll notice that just because fish activity isn't as high as it could be doesn't mean you don't have a decent chance of catching some fish. It just means that you're going to use a plan that's adapted to that activity level. In this case, the app has decided that scaling down to a uh, a lighter line and a, a slower action, a more subtle approach, even though the bait size is fairly large, is going to be effective for triggering those walleyes. Let's go back to the main menu. Now the quick fishing plan is just that, the fastest way to get a detailed recommendation of where to fish, what to use, and how to use it. For when you want to build a plan step by step, choosing from among the best options in each part of a fishing plan, there's this the custom fishing plan. Let's see how that works. It's going to ask us where we want to fish. We'll say the same location as last time. And now when are we going to fish? A lot of times it'll be now, but if you use in the future, it'll have you pick your date and time when you want to fish. You can step through the days on the calendar and you'll see the weather change and the sunrise, sunset, all those factors change as long as the data is there from the National Weather Service. Or we can go to the fish activity calendar. Again, days are color coded and the fishing prospects for each day are rated from 1 to 10. This is a very useful feature for planning a trip weeks or months in advance. In this case we see later this month a nice improvement in the activity level of the walleyes. We'll click on the 25th since that looks like a really promising day. So there's some details on the day that we've picked. We'll say next. So now we're going to pick the time when we want to fish. We could switch between AM and PM and see the stars come out and so on. But we'll go 10:51 uh, AM just because that's what it uh, defaulted at here and see how things work out. Now it's going to show us the weather forecast if a weather forecast is available. Now we have the choice, do we want to use that weather or do we want to enter our own? If we disagree with the forecast or we just want to try some what-if scenarios, then we could override the weather forecast, but we'll use the uh, forecast from the National Weather Service here. The conditions last time, we said the water was high and falling, um, stained red or brown in color. Have the conditions changed? We'll say they're the same. We could answer those questions again, say that they're different. Now water temperature is an important factor. The app will forecast what it expects the water temperature to be depending on your location, the type of body of water, the clarity, there's a lot of factors, the recent weather. But if you have a thermometer with you and you can get an accurate measurement of the water temperature, say you know that the water temperature isn't 54 degrees but it's more like 58, then go ahead and enter it here. You can fine tune the app and it get even more accurate uh, recommendations. Now notice, as we pick our target species, now it's actually ranking them by activity too. 
So the walleyes are moderately active. Let's go down and pick northern pike. And here is our forecast for from the time we start fishing for the next 12 hours. And we'll see the activity level graphed. Looks like it's really going to fall off around uh, eight, between 8 and 9 o'clock with a nice peak between 1 and 2 in the afternoon. If we want to know why the app thinks the northern pike are going to show this particular activity or really the activity at the time that we're starting, you can hit details and get an explanation about how the water temperature, the light level, and other factors are affecting this species. All right, so we're going to go back. We can adjust our fishing time forward or back an hour earlier, an hour later. We'll go one hour later. Now the app's going to walk us through selecting structures and covers and things like that. In this case, it sees only one really promising structure, and that's bays. It expects the vast majority of the northern pike to be concentrated in bays right now, so we'll take that. Covers, it's got some more choices for us to consider. Submergent and emergent vegetation, it sees both of those as excellent. It sees areas without cover as good. Docks, brushy cover as poor, things that it considers really poor and not worth choosing won't even make the list. Let's say submergent vegetation. As long as you pick something that's ranked excellent at each step, you'll generally build a really good fishing plan. So technique, you could be casting retrieving, trolling, jigging, still fishing. There's excellent prospects with all. We'll go with the cast and retrieve. So baits or lures. Again, ranked now considering everything that we've decided so far considering that we're talking about bays with submergent vegetation for northern pike it's gonna rank these lures and baits so we can scroll through here and pick one that uh, that looks excellent let's go with um, let's go with the spinner bait it's ranked excellent next we're gonna see lure colors also scored looks like purple blue are ranked excellent it's considering the water color the species the light level a lot of things in this decision uh, let's go with chartreuse that's one of the ones ranked excellent and here we have our fishing plan for northern pike bays as expected and submergent vegetation we contributed to those choices it's suggesting a depth of around seven feet anything from four to ten but areas with no current and here's our spinner bait suggesting a fairly large one about five inches sometimes it's going to recommend an actual name brand lure in this case it's the strike king burner spinner bait and it will often tell you why that particular bait is especially appropriate at this time in this location there is also a button down here to shop for lures it'll take you to a place that carries that particular model if you don't want to see the name brand lures if you consider that advertising that you don't want to have in a paid app you can go to the options screen and turn it off and see only generic lures but a lot of people do prefer to see the name brand. Again, you can change species, change location. But here in the, uh, in the techniques and tips, we're going to have a recommendation for the type of rod, the line test. Uh, in this case, 12-pound uh, test braided line with a heavy wire or fluorocarbon leader. The northern pike are very active, and the prospects are very good, and the fish activity will improve a bit over the next hour. So that is the custom plan step by step making each decision to help find the fish that you're after. This is what the option screen looks like. Here's that option I mentioned, the name brand lures. If you don't want to see name brand lures in there, uncheck this box. For each fish species, if you don't want to see them on the list, you're not interested in, say, you want nothing to do with uh, channel catfish, you can uncheck species. The same goes for uh, types of lures and baits. So if you want to use only artificial lures, you could uncheck these first ones that are um, natural baits. And then there's all the different categories of artificial lures. You can uh, select only the ones you're interested in. And then the fishing techniques. If you don't have a boat, you probably don't want to consider trolling or vertical jigging, maybe only still fishing and cast and retrieve. If you hit done, it'll save your changes. We're going to cancel our changes. Those were just for an example. So that's my fishing advisor. Now before we wrap this up, consider this. Imagine a professional bass angler ready to leave the dock for a day on the lake. He's in a state-of-the-art bass boat with cutting-edge electronics. He's got at least a dozen high-end rods and hundreds of the best lures. Now suppose a casual angler is launching his boat there too. He fishes a couple times a month. He's got an old boat with only basic equipment. He has one rod and a couple dozen lures he bought at a discount store. 
of course the odds are that the professional is going to outfish the casual fisherman. But suppose they traded equipment for the day. Give the pro the old boat, the one rod, the handful of lures, and give the other guy the best boat and tackle you can buy. Now who's going to catch the most fish? People who know fishing would still bet on the pro. The reason is simple. Knowing where to fish and what to use is what matters most. And that's why we created My Fishing Advisor. Because decisions catch fish.